This is Ron Moorhead. You're listening to The Basement Hangout. This is not your normal broadcast at all. the creek of the big rocks. It's a hard act to follow. They sound like he talks to others and they talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I wish I knew what they were saying because the cryptolinguist said that the same people or the same entities made these sounds that made the ones two years before. But he thinks they slowed their vocalizations down because they chatter really fast, rapidly, if you noticed. But these were not chattering so fast. They were trying to say something to me. And uh, I don't know what it was. To this day, I don't know what it was. A lot of people say, well, we know what they're saying, da 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 but they're all telling me something different. So how do you know who to believe? Yeah, you can make it anything. Yeah. So someday I'll know, but I don't know. The Japanese day, haven't deciphered this. <laughs> Unless they're, they're trying to tell me, be, be in the basement with these guys in yeah. Go to the basement yes. hang out. We are time travelers. That is definitely what they were saying. <laughs> uh, that's probably true. Greetings, all you Sasquatch lovers. Welcome to the Basement Hangout, coming to you from somewhere in American suburbia. My name is Chad, and with me, as always, is Bob. Chad, did you bring the vid back to Kentucky? Because you sound horrible. (laughs) Good God. (laughs) Uh, I brought something back. It's some kind of cold. I have tested myself twice for COVID using a home test and it's come back negative every time. And is that in the nose or other holes? Yeah, it's all the way up the nose. Not no other holes. So in China, they test other areas, but I won't go into that. But <laughs> good thing I'm in the good old US of A. Glad you're healthy. But I do have my, my spray chloroseptic for sore throats here so that I don't cough all over the microphone. Or me. It, or really, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not the, worried about you. I'm worried about the microphone. I'm, I'm the wor- diamond in the basement. I'm worried about in our uh, I'm worried about our guest listening to me cough. Speaking of our guest, Bob. Yes. In between beer tastings and binges down here in the basement hangout, you and I have gone down various rabbit holes. It was only in the last year or so that we started taking the Bigfoot phenomenon seriously Correct. after listening to hundreds of eyewitness accounts. We came across recordings of the Sierra Sounds somewhere within that rabbit hole and soon found out they are the only known, studied, and to this day unchallenged recordings of Bigfoot. And highly respected. Yes. Never did I think that we'd have on our show a true legend of the Bigfoot world, the man responsible for many of the Sierra Sounds recordings. But with us tonight is that man himself, Ron Moorhead. Ron how are you doing? Nice to see you. And welcome, sir. I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. Appreciate being with you. All right. Awesome. So my understanding is that uh, in 1972, and please correct me on any of this, in 1972, some deer hunters, avid deer hunters, they would go out into the nether areas of the Sierras and they would camp and they were camping in this remote area and they encountered these creatures that were making these, you know, sounds and whatnot. And they knew that something new and interesting was going on. This wasn't your typical, you know, uh, animal. So they reached out for help and ended up getting hooked up with uh, an investigative reporter named Al Barry, who then went out there thinking this was a hoax. And he went out with his audio recorders and whatnot. And it turned out he didn't, after all, think it was a hoax. Do I have that right so far? Oh, uh, no. 
Oh, <laughs> my research <laughs> is excellent. Close, I, no told I told him. I told him. The camp was actually uh, inhabited by the Johnson brothers since 1958. Oh wow! They've been they've been going there hunting since then, and uh, they went up there in 1971 in the summertime, and and these things came around the camp, and uh, they didn't know what to think of it. They didn't have Bigfoot on their radar at all. None of us did really, and. Uh, they came out and told the other guys because the sounds they were making, they, they knew it wasn't a bear or anything like that because they're avid hunters. And uh, about eight miles in the wilderness is this uh, camp, and there's a shelter up there, just a group of trees in a circle, and we wrapped cable around it and laid some deadfall up over that and same way over the top of it. So uh, this happened, started happening in 1971. And that's when I first went in. Uh, when the guys went up, I wasn't a hunter at the time, but I was friends with all of them. And... Uh, Johnson's came out and told the other guys uh, about the whatever it was up there, some kind of monster making these noises. And they went back up and they took some tape recorders. And uh, then the, all the guys were up there. I say all of them, there's only five. And uh, uh, one of the guys heard it and he just got freaked out. He, he left the next morning. He left a little note for everybody else. And he wasn't going to go back, but the guys hadn't come out when they were supposed to. So, uh, the wives were worried and they wanted him to go back and check up on the guys. They didn't know what kind of monster they were dealing with, if it was going to eat them or whatever, kill them. What, they had no idea what they were dealing with. And uh, so he wouldn't go back by himself. I was friends with him, like I say. So he asked me if I'd join him, and I I did immediately because I, they're friends of mine too. If something's wrong, I wanted to help. If something else was going on, I wanted to know about it because it sounded really exciting. And, but you had to but get there on that horseback, though? That was 1971. Did you have to go on horses? You couldn't drive a vehicle there, right? No, you can't drive a vehicle. It's about eight right. miles into the wilderness. Very imposing area to get to. Uh, 8,400 feet of camp's elevation. Uh, we leave about 6,000 feet where we have to park our vehicles and then start walking. And it's quite a hike, really. A very, very taxing place to go to. Uh, we, we, we started taking horses. I mean, they took horses, but uh, not every time. Because what, you, what we did is we packed supplies in on mules and that's what we started doing anyway, and storing them in some barrels that we strapped to trees up there with cables. And uh, that way we had supplies when we walked in, didn't have to pack in and out so much stuff. Eight miles a long way over tough like a tra- terrain like that. And yeah, it's long. It can really tear you up there. So anyway, it was 1972 when Alan Berry went in. Uh, Warren Johnson, the leader of our group, he, he had uh, written a letter to Ivan Sanderson a cryptozoologist, uh, and Ivan Sanderson, thinking it was probably just somebody pulling his leg, sent it to Peter Byrne, who was out on the West Coast in the Dallas, Oregon at the time, with a Bigfoot Information Center, and he said, I want to check this out, but Peter thought it's probably a hoax, too, so he called up Alan Berry, who he knew, and uh, Alan Berry was in Redding, California, working for a newspaper at the time, and he came down to the San Joaquin Valley, where we were, where most of us were living, and interviewed us uh, separately and together and uh, we ended up inviting him in in 1972 we took him in and he started experiencing the same thing but he was looking for a hoax like everybody thought right. it was so that's how it kind of yeah because nobody really took i mean what were you guys even thinking you were encountering was bigfoot even a word at that <laughs> it point, wasn't on you your know? radar so what do you think it was, was a word but uh really from the patterson film of 67 right. it's the only you know really thing we knew and we didn't know that much about it really there was no noise uh, in the patterson yeah family. certainly nobody knew what it sounded like right no 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 reports like this and and we all started taking recorders up with us little cassette recorders that's all we had in those days and started recording these things when they came around and uh they were just uh, a unique experience and uh Got to know or learn quite a bit. In retrospect, I could have done. We could have all done something differently up there because we tried to set up camera traps. We tried to do all kinds of things to gain more uh, information. All we captured though was our was our sounds, and that proved to be uh, pretty significant. Now, so and, is it because they were finding the camera traps and and somehow disabling them or just avoiding? Um, well, they certainly either they broke three cameras we had. I think three different times. And knocked them off the tree. So I think they learned that uh, these little black threads, six foot between these trees up there, does something that's not normal. I see. So we just, we just put that up there like that and they go around a different way or knock it down. And so back, uh, so is that like literally the VHS type recorder, like put on a tree? No, little cameras. Uh, 
edit or uh, 35 millimeter cameras. Okay, 35 millimeter. Okay. Yeah, VHS came later, I think, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. Good point. Well, we didn't have much to work with back in those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. trying to picture the technology on the tree. I mean, but some of the sounds are pretty amazing. Yeah, they are pretty clear. Uh, we, we will play them, by the way. Um, but uh, so, did you see them? Did you ever see them? Once. <clears throat> and uh, that was just a glimpse in 1974, because most of the interaction would happen when uh, or they'd come around the camp when we go inside the shelter. Like a night? As soon as you stepped out, the sounds would stop. You step back in, and they start up again. So it was really hard to see them. Oh, Malberry wow. tried so much to uh, stick his head up through the shelter a little bit and watch his microphone, because he had remoted his microphone about 40 feet up above the shelter where they'd been coming in from and to a little sibling tree, and that's where the clear recordings came in. Okay. He, uh, he uh, captured those sounds, and it sounded like they were right next to the recorder, but uh, they weren't. Uh, they weren't next to the... So he had it way microphone. up. But then I found out later on, in fact, just recently, I got to confirm that it seems like they have air sacs in their throat and they can really belt it out. And maybe they were behind a tree or something. Now, how do you confirm like that? that? Well, first of all, uh, some of our sounds are, were made through the vocal cords and not through the lips like we do. And this lady, a uh, linguist from the uh, UK who I just talked to off uh, Sasquatch Chronicles. I got her, her contact information. I we love Sasquatch her. Chronicles, by the way. Yeah, so that's what made us a believer. That's what made us a believer. That yeah, just... Wes. Uh, Wes. Gave yeah. It, I know Wes. Yes. And um, he gave me her, her contact information, and she talked to me personally through Zoom. And uh, she's uh, fluent in seven languages, but she was over here on business in California. And in the evening time, she wanted to go out the ocean. And she drove down the coast of the ways, I guess, and got on a yeah. Uh, Park, parked her car and walked out to the ocean to a trail and was sitting on some rocks watching by the beach there watching the uh, waiting for the sun to go down with her camera and these uh, two adolescent Bigfoots and two female Bigfoots and then a, a big huge male she said come walking by on the beach and they didn't see her and she just froze and, oh uh, that's my favorite episode yeah, it's, of yeah, Sasquatch Chronicles ever that's the lady when she when she's trying to take a picture of the seals yeah, and she passed out and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yes. Yeah, she right. passed out. Yeah, and, amazing uh, episode. Episode the 515, I think it is, from Sex Rush Chronicles. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, she passed out, but prior to that, she, when the male saw her, he screamed, and and uh, she said they were chattering back and forth, and Wes played her some of my sounds, yeah. and she said that's what they sound like. <laughs> she right. said a lot of the sounds, their, their neck would swell up and blow out, and uh, when they would, especially when they scream, or when he'd talk a lot of times, his lips wouldn't move so much, he was talking through the vocal cords. Oh, interesting. So that's kind of uh, really interesting to me, because we've, we've wondered how they make the sounds they make. Uh, they seem to be able to go above our frequency, below our frequency, and within our frequency that we talk in. So that, that leads credence to the people who say, well, I heard my dog's name call when I was out in the woods. And my dog wasn't even there. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, they, <clears throat> these beings will toy with you. They toyed with us. Like I mimicking. think we underestimated. I know we did underestimate what we're dealing with. So now when you caught a glimpse, was it, if you can, was it enough to say it was the classic thought of what Bigfoot looks like with the big shoulders and the, the head that doesn't have a neck and all that kind of stuff? You know, it was so fast. It's right when I was recording that samurai cry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was running down through the trees to two other ones down below. The curve. We think it was a young one, an adolescent, and its mother. And this was the, probably the father, uh, the male. And it was just fast, uh, so fast. Uh, that's what's intriguing. That's what sticks with my head more than anything. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> it's see. how fast it was. But yeah. no, it didn't stop around and look at me and wave or nothing. So I couldn't really <laughs> give you any dead dude. Definitive, uh, you know. So we've definitely heard a lot like. about how fast they are and how they almost glide, right? Yeah, it was gliding. I mean, it just looked like it was just smooth, so smooth running down through there. So like not moving and the legs, gl- like no, it's like the legs they run, but the the their not, upper body doesn't go up and down like ours does. Is what a lot of people describe. Yeah, which yeah. Is like strange. Their hips are different or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I write about that in my mm-hmm. book, Voices in the Wilderness. Uh, that that chapter when I saw him and. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was when I saw what was making the sound because uh, I didn't see his mouth moving like this woman did from UK, but I did it did have a samurai cry and then he shook up shooting by us uh, probably you know, fifty yards away or something maybe less yeah. than that, and all I seen was bright moonlight night and uh, it was 
going through the trees. So when you say shooting trees. by, like how, like faster than any human, like Usain Bolt could ever run? I don't think a human could run this fast. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we've heard. Yeah. He had to be jumping over logs and not tripping on things and all that stuff. Yeah, right that's now. the other they, crazy part. It's just yeah. really unique. But what's this amazing season. about that um, episode on Sasquatch Chronicles that uh, the woman from UK is that she was on a beach, basically, in a cove in, in California, and they're walking down the beach. You only think of these in the forest. So w- wasn't there, like, one in the water throwing seaweed to the... Yeah, and yeah. then they were eating the seaweed, right? The male. The male was in the... He's going down under the water, picking out, pulling out seaweed, throwing it back to the female, and they were Robbing chewing on it or something, stuff, throwing yeah. it over yeah. their shoulder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were uh, trying to stay healthy by eating. So she seaweed. went to take pictures. I think of sea otters, right? That are not in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Not that's right. Not seals. That's correct. Okay, but without further ado, let's listen to some of the uh, Sierra sounds. Now I've got these organized into two groups. One that Al Barry, the investigative reporter you mentioned, took that he recorded, and then there's a group of them that I think you recorded. Correct. We were all recording. It's just those were the best. Those are the ones. The ones Al, you're going to play with Al Berry. He's he's the one that uh, sent him to the University of Wyoming for Professor Curlin, electrical sound engineer, to assess if they were real and if there's any sixty cycle hum or anything, right. any evidence of a uh, of manipulation. And there wasn't. So he came out with a pretty good report and presented that in Anthropology Unknown in 1978, I think it was in Vancouver, BC. Yeah. So University wait before there. so before you play this, yes. How messed up did these sounds, how, how much did this fuck up your life, like personally, emotionally, after you heard this for the first time, but people who have never heard it before? Especially in real life. Yeah. Like what did it, obviously you say you're going back, you're recording, like you went with the friend to find other friends who didn't come back, their wives are upset. How did this put your life into a tailspin after you heard this for the first time? Well, it just made me more eager to know. I've always been kind of adventurous spirit and I, I wanted to uh, be part of that whole happening up there whatever it was and explore it more at the time we were i started hunting after that with the guys that are going through all the time so I had quite a few encounters with these things coming around our camp at night it wasn't until 74 when that samurai cry and i got a glimpse of one when when uh, really it broke open for me too that uh, now i can because people say if you don't see what made this sound you don't know what made this sound you know and that's so true but I did not see it move its mouth when it made the sound like this woman did. And it, it right. really, because you know, I've had a medium one time, I don't know what, how much weight to put on that, but tell me that they had more than, uh, more than two vocal cords. They have seven. If that's true, then uh, they can probably make any kind of sound they want to make. Mm-hmm. And believe me, some of the sounds we've heard up there are not just the vocalizations, but just like one time our camp and being tore apart, we thought everything was being ripped away from our barrels that we'd ha- packed in on the mules and, we look out there later on when it's all stopped, nothing's changed, Nothing. nothing's moved. So, so they, they can uh, mimic a lot of different things. Yeah, animals, I think they can mimic anything. That's amazing. So how many cores do we have, two? Yeah. So, like, if it, were you dating any women or did it, like, ruin relationships for you when you were, like, obsessed all of a sudden? <laughs> I was married with two children. <laughs> so what? Was how would that ruin marriage? your relationship? I'm saying if I experience something like, honey, I'm going to go up there, like, do, I need to go record these things every weekend from here until like, a, I'm just asking. I don't that know. booty was amazing, honey. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't understand. I'm saying like, if I got obsessed with something, maybe my wife would be like, what the hell? You're an idiot. I'm divorcing you or something. I don't know. Well, yes. Just she asking. says that to you on a daily basis. Right. <laughs> well, she, knew, uh, yeah, uh, she knew the uh, integrity of the men I was involved with and we all socialized yes. with the with them, some of them, uh, a lot of, anyway. So, so it was she was playing around, yeah, but good. she was also a little bit concerned and afraid because uh, we go well, up there sure. you still don't know what you're dealing with. They're going to eat you or if their sounds are making or arguing over salt and pepper or what. You know, you now, know. we've tried to convince our wives that uh, Sasquatch Bigfoot is real and they just look at us like two idiots. Well, the, we had one night where... We almost had them. We showed him that one video of the... Well, I'm going to play that for him okay, later. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get his opinion on so, that. So, but what chords did you guys have? Like, what kind of chords do you have wrapped around those trees to make your little, like, area? Is it Was it, like, uh, well, those steel? Those were cables. Well, I know. What, like, steel cables or what? Yeah, steel cables. Okay. So, okay, now, the people are dying to actually hear the sounds at this point. <laughs> My favorite of the sounds are definitely the ones that sound like the samurai, but I don't know if I should start there. No, um, probably not. If you want to go chronologically, you go yeah. with the... Uh, Whistle the, sequence, interacting with men. 
I did. Yeah. I did download and pay for all the sounds. Do it chronologically, Chad. Just Don't so fuck you know, up, please. Okay. <laughs> so this one's forty-one seconds long. It's called Whistle Sequence Interacting with Men. Here we go. Okay, so what's going on there? Who's whistling? That was Warren Johnson, mm-hmm. and uh, he was when he was there. He was the one who made the sounds out to them. Uh, when he wasn't there, I was the one that would do it. So we were all there then, and uh, that was uh, that was when Al Berry had his recorder up, uh, remoted up behind the shelter, about forty feet, and uh, so you could hear Warren in the background trying to whistle and get some interaction going. And, and by the way, that whistle sound we've through the studies we've had done is actually done through the vocal cords, not through their lips. Like we whistle through our lips. These things were through their through So their were all of those wow. whistles a Bigfoot or some of those? Oh. Okay. You could tell the difference. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The true. first yeah, one was human. The ones that were more solid were the Bigfoot and the ones that were, <clears throat> they like sounded like the lips, me or like, you whistling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the uh, ones were was Warren uh, whistling. And then uh, the rebuttal, uh, the creature anyway, uh, was whistling right. through his vocal cavity. And I, it actually, it turns into a chatter, too, sometimes. Okay, so the next one is called Attention Display. Here we go. I just shit my pants in real life. (laughs) (laughs) If I heard that, I would be literally shitting my pants. And what did you think was going to protect you? The cables, I guess? Because were, were you scared? Well, they didn't not? have any indication that there was, uh, you know, aggression, I guess. I don't know. You tell us. Well, the sounds, you don't know. You still don't know what they're right. arguing about. There's two of them out there, and you don't know if they're arguing about who's going to come in first and take a chance on it. We're all armed, by the way. It's a hunting okay. camp. We wouldn't go up there without right. 44 magnums and what have you. So we were all ready to shoot our way out if we had to, but uh, we didn't have to. They did not. Uh, threaten us or come inside but again we don't know if this these sounds were interacting between the two of them arguing over something between them or if it was arguing over us we we just didn't know at the time so your guys' so, thought was that there were two there that were talking to each other and the recorder was in such a place that it captured something that potentially they didn't mean for you guys to actually hear is that right my am, am I understanding I don't know what they thought I know we just captured the sounds they were making. But could With you no hear them from you? Yeah. Could you hear them from where you were outside oh, of the recording? Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, sure, because we were all recording that. We all had the same thing I going see. on. That's fascinating. So, did you hide anything from your wife when you're going through it? Like, I think if I if I play that <laughs> for my wife, she'd be like, "What the? Do not go back there. They're gonna." That's true. I wasn't having trouble with my wife. She was excited too. She just concerned, like all yeah. the women were, if their husbands were going to come back. What we we're dealing with, yeah. and, or not come back, yeah, yeah. But we're all kind of adventurous. I mean, we we you were, were just armed the, to the teeth and ready doing what we did. Yeah, <laughs> having kind of excitement, an exciting time. Once we realized after several times that they weren't really coming, charging us or eating yeah. us or carrying us away in our sleeping bag or anything like that. So we. We just kind of got a little more relaxed, a little more uh, excited about going up there and seeing if something more would happen. And uh, that's awesome. So that's that's kind of our so now, mindset at the time. Is it possible that they were as because it's such a remote area where very few people go? Although you said they've been going there since 1959, but is it possible that they were as interested in you guys as you were in them because they don't see a lot of people? Well, I'm not sure it's because they don't see a lot of people. I think it's probably they were just they're curious about humans, uh, what we're doing. 
Well, it was a very clean camp. We weren't drinking. Uh, none of us even smoked. Well, Alberry did, but uh, not that that matters. But uh, uh, we were all of a good mindset, and we were very happy to be there. And I, I get into my theory about vibrational frequency and all that stuff. Yes. I think it's got a lot to do with the interaction and what they deal with. I think they were coming around. There also was a young one involved, like I mentioned before, and uh, they may have been trying to train him to interact or how not to interact with people. Right. I don't know. We don't know what they were thinking when they were chattering. The last chatter I heard was in uh, 2011 when I was up there, and that's the last time I ever heard their chatter. Oh, wow, that, that, oh, that recent. To continue to go back then. But uh, I went back in 2016, wife and I did, and uh, set up a little tent because the shelter is down now. And uh, uh, we seen this light go by us. It was a, well, this gets into <laughs> strangeness. <laughs> Which pill do you want? We're into that. Blue one. But this comes floating by our tent. And I mean, it's a little concerning. You don't know what it's all about, but it's definitely intelligent. Uh, it was moving through the trees intelligently. We watched it for close to a minute, probably before it uh, just uh, went off and uh, didn't come in for us or nothing. So I don't know what it's about, but, but we no also see other day. anomalies and different things up there associated with the, the area, which are very strange. So does anyone go there, like other, like you and the Johnson brothers and you know, the friends who are still around? Are they? Are you guys the only ones that know the location? We're very the only ones that know the location. I, I'm about the only one that goes up. Well, I think that the heirs, Warren Johnson passed away a long time ago. And yeah. Alberry has passed away since, too. So we're all getting older. You know, I'm 79 now. I was 29 when it started. So You look wow. very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, you can see me, can't you? <laughs> yeah. You guys are still in the dark in the basement. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, we're all dying off. I mean, uh, I'm me and Bill McDowell are, are still out there, and, but he doesn't go up there anymore. And uh, uh, I think the heirs of the Johnsons, you know, his son, uh, Larry, and possibly his grandchildren might go up there and still hunt bear just during hunting season. But uh, again, no one's been up there on, uh, on horseback or foot that I know of to check it out. Since 16? Since 18. So, so uh, do you think that the, the those beings are still there or no? I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, I know they have quite a range. I'm sure they do. Uh, they've been seen all up and down the Sierras, but uh, uh, this is such a remote area. Uh, and if there's if there's cave systems up there, something like that, which we've never found, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they don't go underground. And if that's the case, uh, I don't know. There may be a portal right there if you don't guys ever follow follow what portals are. There's some kind yes. of enigma right there at our camp. My apologies, Ron. I had to go take care of this uh, cough. No problem. I was having to step away and hack a lung out over here. I did. <laughs> I did take two COVID tests, and they both came out negative. But now I'm starting to wonder, what the Bob. Fuck, dude? <laughs> hey, you don't want to pass that on to me. Yeah, yeah not, I'm only like not three feet this, away. From yeah, you. he's literally three feet away from me. We're yelling at each other over here. So it's okay. I will take care of your wife and children. I promise. No one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and how did you take care of the cough real quick? What does that mean? Uh, I went in, gargled some salt water like you oh, recommended. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I just recommended that to him, uh, Ron, because <laughs> that's what my uh, babysitter told me when I was a small child. <laughs> All right, so let me play the next one in the sequence. Uh, this is called Male and Female Bigfoot Interacting. All right, here we go. Somebody didn't complete their honey do list. <laughs> or is not going to fornicate tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think that well, that's all about? Well, according to uh, Nancy Logan, who is a uh, <clears throat> expert in sounds, she also was at the time uh, only one of ten in California that was court certified uh, as an interpreter in several languages. So she uh, she listened to him and she said that that was a male and a female arguing. Hmm. And that's also uh, Scott Nelson. He's a crypto linguist who studied them. He said that's what it is: a male and a female uh, have a, some kind of about. 
uh, as much as you sounds like a big male trying to show his dominance, uh, mm-hmm. Nancy said the female won. So well, let me tell you, I try to show my up, dominance to my wife on. all the time, and I always lose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the next one is aggressive display on- only. Aggressive display. And uh, this is definitely one where I pick up my gear, turn around, and run home. Somebody's pissed. <laughs> or it could be a mating call. Who knows? I mean, oh, that's true. It's not like he's beating his chest or something. Don't know, yeah. but uh, a little concerning when you hear that. That's uh, that's pretty aggressive sounding. So, did you guys hunker down when you heard heard some? Yeah, we were always hunkered down inside the shelter. Yeah, okay. but then after a while, well, not this is one of the first sounds right there, I think. But at seventy-two, and we also heard that at seventy-one. But Alberry recorded that particular one right there. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we're there with our guns ready. Uh, we don't know still what we're dealing with. We said they got a big voice. They're huge. Uh, uh, as time went on, we were some of the guys were getting glimpses of them. Uh, my daughter saw them three times up there. And, wow! Uh, it's just uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it, but they never they never did attack us. They never did show the aggression that sounds like they were showing to each other. Who knows? Yeah. That was just uh, very exciting times. So the next one is, uh, this is the vocal interaction. This is where you get the samurai sounds. It's like four minutes long. Oh, that is a long one. Yeah. Well, you're giving away my whole CD there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, I can I can cut it down. Well, I don't care. I mean, uh, these sounds have been out now for a long time, and, and I just want them out and uh, people to hear them. I yes. do sell them on my on my website. Uh, and we bought them there. Hear the whole story. Yes. Know? And it's uh, Jonathan Frakes' Star Trek. He narrates the first CD with those aggressive sounds on it. Or Alberry wrote the story. I produced it. Right. And then the uh, second one I produced myself. And uh, I well, I produced both, but I uh, I wrote it and narrated. And they're both about forty minutes long. They both have integrated uh, sounds from the camp in them. Same location. Yes. Same same spot, but uh, two years difference in time. Well, we at the Hangout purchased the uh, downloadable CD files, and uh, that's how we have all of these for our audience to listen to. I am going to fast forward through this one a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to where the samurai sounds begin, and I think this is the most... These are the most intriguing sounds. These are the ones that get all of the play on the various podcasts out there, Sasquatch Chronicles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and we um, appreciate you wanting to get it out. Yeah, absolutely. Because we know you, you could uh, make it more monetarily beneficial. Play as much of it as you'd like. I don't, I don't really Thank care. You. No, understood. <clears throat> Here we go. There's two of them across the creek at the big rocks. Now, is that you? That's me. Okay. Two of them across. So you could see them, or you were basing that off of the sound? The sounds. Okay. It's a hard act to follow. So prior to that, you had been mimicking them, and mm-hmm. that one was, you said, very hard to mimic, but you said hard act to follow, which you're right. So actually, let me back it up a bit so we can hear some of the mimicry yeah, that as was, well. Uh, that was behind me. That's the one I seen going by. Oh, okay. wow. When they made the samurai cry. Very nice. You know who, who coined the samurai cry, who coined it, called yeah. it, that it was Mad Moneymaker <laughs> when he heard him. Is that first right? Time, just before he started the BFRO.org uh, website, he, he came up and visited with me and... Uh, Heard the sounds. He said, that sounds like a samurai crying. So he, he coined the samurai cry right there. It's a perfect fit. It does sound yeah, like does. if I could imagine a samurai saying some stuff before getting into a battle, that's what it would sound like. Or All right. putting the sword into his. Yeah, exactly. I'm going <laughs> to back up a little bit so we can hear your interaction and, and your discussion with uh, who is with you? Someone named Bill, correct? Bill McDowell. Yeah, he's Bill McDowell. Good friend of mine. Still good friend. is to this day. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Cool. <laughs> Oh. 
Was that you? Yes, yes. You did a good job. Yeah, that's pretty close. So I know you don't know, and I've heard you in other uh, broadcasts, you don't know what they were trying to say to you. In your heart of heart, what do you think possibly, even if it's just conjecture, that they were communicating there? Probably oh, don't eat the fish at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yes, and they were at Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. You know, I wish I knew what they were saying because if I'd have been a little more clear headed, I, I was clear headed during it wrong. But I, I wasn't uh I was trying to be too analytical, trying to I think you know the crypto linguist said that the same people or the same entities made these sounds that made the ones two years before. But he thinks they slowed their vocalizations down because they chatter really fast, rapidly, if you noticed. Mm -hmm. But these were not chattering so fast, they were trying to say something to me. And uh I don't know what it was to this day. I don't know what it was. Yeah. A lot of people say, well, we know what they're saying, da, 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 but they're all telling me something different. So how do you know who to believe? Yeah, you can make it anything. Yeah. So, I definitely don't know, but I don't know. To the this Japanese day, haven't deciphered this. <laughs> Unless they're, they're trying to tell me, be, be in the basement with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the basement, yes. hang out. We are time travelers. That is definitely what they were saying. Uh, that's probably true. I have consulted my wife and she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do they have bigfoot in, or or you know sightings or entities in ja in japan because it is very strange that it sounds so that's i mean a that's good just, question. just I don't us know. as dumb americans who think we well, know english or? we know there's sasquatch and yeti and this and that all over the world do we know if there's a similar thing in japan and if they have a name for it you know, I don't know that. Uh, I should know that. I may know it, but I just can't bring it out of my head right now. Uh, just about every, you know, the uh, Guadalcanal, you know where that was in the Solomon Islands? No. Um, well, they're in the Solomon Islands. Guadalcanal is where the <laughs> World, yeah, War, we haven't World heard. War II was fought, and they have stories there of uh, giants uh, on those islands, and there's a whole book about it, really, and uh, quite a story. So there's there's giants being reported all over. Uh, whether they're, they're all related, I don't know. But uh, I kind of get into uh, a theory on all this stuff, which uh, kind of brings in the uh, what they call paranormal, I guess. But uh, to me, it's not paranormal. It's just trying to understand it. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's called the quantum theory. And that's why I wrote my last book, The Quantum Bigfoot. Yes. Oh, so. On the phone. Bobo's trying to call me. Oh, okay. oh yeah, tell him to come on the show. I've been trying to get Bobo on the yeah, show. Leave a message. 
You know what? I've been trying to get Bobo on the show, but he's ignoring me. Oh, maybe he's trying. Maybe he's on the show now. Listen, <laughs> yeah, you should get him on. Well, we're not live, but you let him know he needs to come on the basement hangout. Yeah. So can you <laughs> can you give a quick summary of that theory? <clears throat> yeah. No. I let me just tell the people that uh, Ron Moorhead's last book was the Quantum Bigfoot, and he gets into right. it now. Back in the early days, it was always just about. Sasquatch is an undiscovered hominid, this and that. I think everybody's sort of, you know, whether they want to admit it or not, coming around to the fact that there's some oddities that would tell us that it's not that quite that simple. And I think you've gotten there as well. Am I correct, Ron? Yeah, it's not that simple. And most researchers think it is. They're out there setting up camera traps or, you know, like we were doing, uh, thinking of them just a erotic hominid running around the woods. But, uh, they're more than that, they're sentient, in my opinion, especially if they have a language, which they do have a language by the human definition of language, which needs explaining. Uh, human definition of language means they can speak in sapient sentences, a morphine stream of words like we're doing now to describe what you're seeing and what you want to think about. It, it, it takes a special connection with the hyoid bone into the tongue, the nervous system into the brain. So you're able to articulate what you're seeing. These things have that, and supposedly only humans are supposed to have that. So, according to Philip Lieberman, Dr. Philip Lieberman at Brown University, he said only humans have the vote. Can you hear me? It says my internet connection. Well, you right. broke up. You broke there, but there for a little bit. We heard most of it. Um, no worries. Uh, so, so could, yeah, we could be descendants of them. Yeah, is that possible? Well. Who knows what's possible? I don't discount anything anymore. <laughs> I think we're all hybrids, really. I think aliens have been... Oh, boy. Um, okay, can you hear us now? Okay. Yeah, can you hear okay. me? Yeah, yeah think- so you were going out big time. I think maybe we're using up the vi- bandwidth with the, vi- with the video, so I've shut the video off for you and us. Um, can you pick back up? Because you were saying something really intriguing about that uh, you think we're all hybrids and that potentially aliens have been with us. Can you pick up from yeah, there? Sure. Well, I believe aliens have been here. They are here now, and they've been coming here for eons. Uh, this Earth is a special planet in the solar system. It has things that other planets don't have. Right now, it's got the water, it's got plants, it's got all kinds of different species. A lot of these species, I think, are probably being hybridized by aliens to acclimate their species to this uh, environment. And that's my opinion, but uh, I think it's a good one. <laughs> I like that opinion, yes. <laughs> yeah, and that's why you hear stories about the dog man, about this, right. that, and the other. Because dog man is super interesting to me. <laughs> and if you get yeah. into uh, really how, how we all are, what, what really makes us up, uh, uh, we're all energy at the most minute level, energy vibrating at a frequency. So everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. That's according to Tesla, according to physics so if we're all energy somehow i believe these beings so some of these beings anyway the ones we were dealing with up there have an ability to change their personal vibrational frequency into from matter into possibly just energy and that's why some people have reported them going into trees the naval Air american lore says they live in trees i've had people tell me i see them come out of a tree well come on that makes no sense to us in our in our, uh, our current paradigm, in our world, the 3D world that we live in, you know, because it doesn't make any sense that we can understand. But then the difference between uh, uh, something very advanced and advanced technology is indistinguishable to us from a miracle. So you, some of these things that the people are calling miracles, I don't believe in miracles. I think it's just understanding quantum physics because we can make things happen if we just learn how to evolve into that type of being. And I think somehow these things may have evolved into some of them anyway. Again, they're not all the same, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we always hear about things like um, somebody will encounter a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot and then maybe the same night or the next night or whatever, they'll encounter these orbs in the woods that are just kind of floating around. What, what do you think about the orb situation? I think they're a source of energy. They are energy. I've had people tell me, too, that uh, they've actually seen Bigfoot disappear and orb appear. So can they change their matter into energy? Perhaps. Maybe that's what they're seeing. Orbs, I think, are they have a design to them. They're not just a flash of light coming off your piece of rain or something off your binoculars or whatever. But there are out there. I've seen them. We had them around our camp. 
um, the Johnson brothers had them falling around above their heads one time up there. And uh, I did, I wasn't there when that happened, but I have no reason to disbelieve them. We're the very intelligent, very uh, honorable men. So, so uh, we had odd things like that happen. Yeah. So now we think that uh, Bigfoot is not necessarily aggressive in a negative way. Um, I don't know if, if I don't I don't know if the jury's out on it yet, but uh, or the jury is out on it. I should say we don't know if it's angry. If it, you know, some people think it's angry. It wants to hurt us. Others think that you know it's not. It's just wants to live its life or whatever. But we have uh, stories of them potentially being aggressive. Do you have any thoughts on whether or not they mean harm or they just want to be left alone or, or maybe they're just like people and some are nice and some are not? Well, they're, in that regard, yes, some are good, some are bad. Uh, there are some negative ones out there. I think the government has something to do with some of that too. They, they have a genetic, geneticist involved with the government who actually has worked on the DNA manipulation of primates and trying to make a super warrior like, uh, well, like Stalin was trying to make, like Hitler was trying to make. All military wants a super warrior. So I think there's probably a secret program out there messing with the genome of or playing around with, with the primate. But the ones I just came out of Alaska here not too long ago, this summer, actually, I was taken up there with the filming crew. And these uh, there's a story about these giants, uh, 15 foot tall, tearing people apart. And, wow. uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, and then you've got the uh, Kandahar giant, which was in Afghanistan, you know, it's supposedly uh, 15 feet Recently? Tall. Oh, that was, uh, when was it? Oh, it's been a few years back now. Holy cow. Uh, like, yeah. But all hairy and stuff? Uh, like Missoula, I, who I know fairly well. I was in South America with him a couple of times. He, he doesn't just uh, come out with anything. He tries to vet it pretty good. He vetted these guys, the pilot of the plane that took it out, and one of the guys was actually on the ground when they were having to shoot this thing. And uh, the story's out there. Damn. But, uh, again, the government really needs and thinks they they think they need to control the narrative, and they they kind of hide a lot of stuff that uh, they don't want us to, or they'll play it a different way or something. So, do you think that the Bigfoots or Sasquatch, the bad ones, if I could say it that way, might be responsible for the missing four one one phenomena? You know, my what I think about that doesn't matter because I have no idea. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it could be that they're being abducted by aliens. It could be Bigfoot is connected with the aliens. I, I, I kind of believe that because about 20% of the sightings goes, goes along with the UFO sighting at the same time. And uh, so I think there's, there's a connection. But I think the aliens they, that are, have manipulated and made these primates like they are probably have an interest in them. And they probably watch them. Um, you so know, now, it's all just my theory, but it's, yeah. it's, it's just so much going on right now. It's, it's it boggles your mind to think of all the stuff that's fixing to happen. Yeah, We're absolutely. going to be watching probably. So now on the missing 411 issue, uh, we tried to get David Politis on the show. And does he have an overarching theory on what's happened to these people or even just a guess? Yeah, he does, but I won't tell you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a good man. He, he I believe he's a good man. You know, yeah. He's a, he's got his thoughts behind it, but he does. He's also a you know, retired uh, detective too in right. law enforcement. He he stays with the black and white. What can be shown, what can be proven, let you make up your own mind of what, what sure. to do with it after that. Absolutely, which is respectful. I just spoke with him in Gatlinburg, uh, Tennessee, here a couple months ago, and. Uh, yeah, we had dinner together. I, I know him. I mean, I, like again, I've known him for years. Uh, when we first started his four one one books, and he's he's the one I trusted to take up to the camp and not reveal the location. Of course, I don't think anybody could find it, even if they knew the location. It's, right. it's not that easy. Just got to know the terrain. You got to know. You got to just know. It's, it's easy to get lost up there. Why is the campsite? Which I totally respect, but I'm just curious. Do you keep it uh, a secret, for lack of a better word, because you don't want people going up there and trying to, uh, you know, make a mockery of it? Well, they wouldn't make a mockery of it, I don't think, if they got stepped on or something. But uh, I just don't want it inundated with researchers. I don't want it inundated with people trying to find out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I don't want all that. And then those Johnson brothers are kind of ticked at me really for coming out like I do it. now in public with all this stuff. Cause I just rather really leave the camp alone and let them hunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it's, of course, the Johnson brothers don't go up there anymore when them died. I'm not sure if Lewis is still with us or not. He's pretty old. But I know he hasn't been up there in years, uh, yeah. for sure. But uh, Warren Johnson's son and grandsons, I think, probably still visit the area. But I don't know. Again, I don't know how much it was messed up when it, when it burned. Yeah. Yeah, the fires had to have impact the... Yeah, you'd think so, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, if they live underground or if there was a cave system, which I have no doubt that there's a lot of cave systems and in the mountains. Uh, you know, they could get away from it all like that. Or if they're interdimensional, like if they can change their vibrational frequency to energy only and do something like I suggested, uh, then they wouldn't worry about a fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, right Ron, we have a tradition here where we taste test a beer. And uh, so what I'd like to do, if possible, we'll do a quick taste test now. And then I want to get your opinions on some videos of supposed Sasquatches that are out there in the wild and see if you think maybe they're fake, real, or just uh, unknown, if you don't mind. So I think your expert opinion uh, would be highly appreciated by our listeners. And uh, most of these we reviewed on the show in the past. But before we do that, we have our taste test, and uh, Ron has been so kind enough to join us on this. And so, uh, Bob, first of all, let's talk about what do you have there? What, what are we tasting tonight? This is from Stone. Uh, Which I know is one of your favorites. Yes, I do love the Stone Brewery. It's called Stone Delicious IPA. And it has the uh, devil, whatever the hell that thing is, <laughs> with horns on it, as per normal. I'm used to stone IPA, not stone delicious right, yes. IPA. This so are they trying to say their other IPA tastes like crap or what? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> sure. What's crazy is if I turn the can upside down, it says leave no stone unturned.com. Okay, well, we're going to have to go to that website. Like Ron, right up your alley, you're an adventurist. Yes. Uh, so it says stone, citrusy, lemon drop hops, tropical, El Dorado hops, seven point seven percent. Whoa! Alky by volume. I'm sorry, honey. When I get home, gluten <laughs> reduced. What the hell does that mean? Uh, not glu- not quite gluten free. It was but- there. They reduced it. <laughs> so once we tasted better, possibly delicious IPA and uh, crafted to reduce gluten. What the hell? This beer was. I can't even read it. It's so dark. The basement is so dark. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Anyway, it looks amazing, and. I want you to tell the aura and the smells you have, Chad. Okay, and Ron, what are you what are you tasting with us tonight, or what what did you bring? Well, it's a Bigfoot Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Or wait a minute, uh, yeah, Bigfoot uh, barley wine style ale, so and it's, it's literally Sierra called Sierra Bigfoot Nevada. from Sierra Nevada. From the Sierras, yeah, that Sierra is Nevada. I think they brew, I think they make it in uh, Chico, Nevada. For sure. Could that be any the more perfect? And brewed at Sierra Nevada Brewery in Chico. Yep, I'm right. And Sierra Nevada is one of like the top beers. Uh, there's Sierra yeah, Nevada. Yeah, I IPAs. love Sierra Nevada. Uh, I, it's just so perfect that you've got a Bigfoot beer for us tonight. Okay. Very nice. So, so Chad, gonna, I just popped the tab, you know, the little thing you donate to the kids, like uh-huh. the foundation. And in the tab, there's literally a little devil. I can look through oh, the tab. Oh, I see that. You know, the water bringer would have a real hard time with this symbology yes. on this can of beer. So it smells very, very clean, not as fruity as I would expect. It smells kind of fruity to me, to be honest. Now you have a cold or possibly Delta. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. That is you can't true. smell anything, you idiot. I may drink this beer and die of COVID tomorrow. Or I have the Mew and I can't smell anything. I'm not sure. I do like it. It smells juicy. It's a little bit less juicy on the taste buds and a little bit harsh. It is 7.7, though. Let me taste it again. So with the Stone Original IPA, what I always love is a slight bite. Yeah. And I got to say, this is a nice slight bite. This has more than a slight bite. This has a strong bite. You have Delta, so <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's a, you well, son of a bitch. It's slightly strong, but your taste buds are destroyed. Mine are intact. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right about that, actually. It is a little bit... I don't know. 
Let me drink more. Okay, you well, know, you're taking so too long. I am taking an adventure. We don't have all night <laughs> for your damn I'm beer adventuring. Tasting. Hold on. Ron, tell us about your beer. How's your beer? How's your Sasquatch beer? <laughs> well, I got to tell you, I bought a six-pack. Uh, I bought this in 2001. Maybe you know, it is 20 years ago. So don't pop it then. That, shit, that uh, might be uh, kicked by now. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I'm not popping it, so, but I tell you what, I've got five left. I did pop one years ago, and uh, that's when I grew a lot more hair on my chest. Uh, it's pretty strong, but I'm not really a heavy beer drinker, to be honest with you. Only when, when it's a pizza night or hot out in the, mowing the lawn or something. So what do you drink? What Do you like to drink at all? or? I drink a little wine. Uh, red, red or wine white? At, at eating time at dinner, something like that. Red I'm not and white. Hard alcohol, too much anymore. So when you are out, out mowing the lawn, it's ninety degrees, and uh, you're really in the mood for a beer. What beer do you select? I like Ultra. Oh, make a little Ultra. Make Ultra, yeah, there it's good. Go. Yeah. Like water, water for the lawn. <laughs> yeah, I, pr- you know, well, I think you grow, you grow into beer like you do wine. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, true. You uh, you start off with a light. Like I, I'll make a drink a Bud Light or something like that because. Really, I just want I just want something kind of fizzy and cool, but I don't want something sweet. So yeah, I, I stay away from Pepsi's or Coke. So I don't drink anything like that ever, hardly ever. So what's your unless, go- there's, unless there's rum in it? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. That works. So what's your go-to wine? Because you're in a very uh, high class wine area, Cabernet. Okay. Any pati- Cabernet. specific brewer or uh, winery or? Well, I stay away from California wines because they use Roundup in their in their soil oh uh, wow we we get uh, usually uh, uh wines from italy or from spain uh, uh colombia uh they interesting get the, out of country wines they they're a lot less money and sometimes they're just a whole lot better yeah i agree with but that they, they make them a lot less expensively there they don't have to pay all these people uh, in napa valley <laughs> <laughs> anyway Okay, before we get into the review of the Sasquatch videos that are out there and get Ron's opinion, I did want to get his opinion on this. I did. I went out into my backyard and recorded one night. I thought I heard Sasquatch out there, Bob, and I got my own <laughs> uh, recordings. I want to get your opinion on this. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, what the heck? What is that, Bob? <laughs> it was an owl. <laughs> <laughs> that Sasquatch is no good, Bob. No, that's Bob. What the fuck is that? That's Bob. What the fuck is that? I don't know why they didn't act spring for Boss Hog, actually. Okay, he was trying to vocalize there. But uh, that sounded pretty pure. Like it, was, <laughs> it was real. You sounded almost like Sasquatch, but you don't have eight vocal cords. So seven. My uh, my BS meter is going off. That was just you. Is it seven vocal cords or eight? Now, speaking of Joe Rogan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somehow he is uh, not uh, liking the sounds. He says he can mimic those sounds. Well, are you serious? I, no way. Yeah, I challenge him to do that because yeah, they can't the be duplicated according to the studies we've had done. But he just hasn't done his homework on them. He doesn't know. I heard his report has been told to me also, and it's too bad because he's smart Joe Rogan, and, I challenge you on the basement hangout. Yes. Let me hear you make those sounds. So he well, had yeah, Plus, he's got to have two of them to do it because they're stepping on each other. You know, they're arguing back and forth sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Right. You can't, you can't reach the frequencies. You guys know who Thinker or Thunker is? I'm sorry, say again? You ever, you ever heard of Thinker or Thunker? Think for Thunker? No, I haven't. He, he analyzes. Well, he he took a sound. He does a twenty-minute analyzation on the sounds, and he says that one sound. He shows us on frequency chart that one sound can reach five octaves in one tone, and he says that's inhuman. No human on the face of this planet can do that. So uh, uh, that's not been tested by a PhD yeah. anywhere, but. But it's kind of interesting the report he gave. So. I'm surprised that Joe Rogan would say that no, kind of so thing. Remember, he had the show Joe Joe Rogan questions everything on like 
Oh, I know. I didn't True know that. True TV. Either. Okay, so I only I, know him from that stupid show back in the day where he like had people the, swim with snakes. Oh, no, no. no what was that nonsense? Uh, Fear Factor. Fear Factor. Terrible show. But he was on and like now uh, he's like a billionaire from his podcast, so he can say whatever the hell he wants. No, but he had ju- but, he had the show, so everything, but everything he, so they had, they had a Bigfoot one, they had a UFO one, they had everything you can think of for one at least one or two seasons i can't remember so i recorded it watched a couple of them and i was like no matter what the hell they told him he always he is never a skeptic. well yeah he never believed anything it's ever. real easy to play the skeptic under any circumstance right it's the harder to be the one that steps out and says hey i know this doesn't fit your you know typical narrative but this is you know you got to look at it it's real so but i don't think he experienced i think if ron were to take him to his location or you know the secret location he would believe because I, he, I don't think he experienced anything, so he doesn't know what the hell. Well, neither have I. Right, me neither. He just needs to read what what studies have been done on the sounds, yeah. you know, and understand what 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 happened and what goes on. He didn't know from what so, I was listening to. He just he was just uh, ignorant uh, talking about it. He shouldn't have been doing that, in my opinion. I but, agree. He believes. And I he challenge believes. him anytime to to uh, try to do it. Because according to the specialists we've had done, they cannot be duplicated by the human vocal mechanism. So, yeah. will you? Would you be on Joe Rogan's podcast if he asks us? Well, he did ask me. He did ask me one time years and years ago. I was really? scheduled to be with him, but I, I was. I didn't think too much of him, to be honest with you, because I didn't like his bullshit meter and all that. Stuff. I, yeah, I understand <laughs> that, and I respect, and, I respect um, that. Really, I do what respect we did that. was serious. It really did happen. So, I didn't. I didn't want to be shot at so much, but I didn't care. I was still going to be on his program. Well, we are very was, humbled that you came here with us. Yeah, this he is a better place. He was traveling through some place, and, and I was traveling through the same time. So, well, we can meet a certain place. But anyway, because I was traveling, and I he couldn't be there, and I I couldn't stay. And so, anyway, I wasn't on his program. Well, Understood. to all you basement hangouters here, you heard it here first. Joe Rogan is bullshit. Yeah, and, <laughs> and if, if he's, you know, he needs to put his money where his mouth is and actually try to make these vocals. There's no way in hell. He needs yeah, to put all of his money where his mouth is. And yeah, if he can't do it, he needs to give it all up. <laughs> all right, can you see my screen right now? Uh, I do. I've okay. seen that picture before, too. Yeah. Okay, so this is a video. It's a very, very short video, and they just loop it. I don't know who this group NVTV is. We reviewed this on last week's uh, episode in your honor, we said that uh, Ron's coming on next week and can't wait to get his opinion on this. So, this is uh, a very, very short video, and it has not been able to be explained why they only got a few seconds of video. Uh, and they added some creepy music behind it. So, uh, let's let's watch it and get your opinion. And that's the whole loop, Ron. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Over and over again. So I know you said you saw it like for one second. Is that even anything close to what you? Th- what you well, saw? The, the people that I've listened to that have looked at this say it's it's not real. Is that it's right? Been looped and it's been yeah, it's just not. Uh, yeah, and why is it looped? So what do you? So you've seen this already. Yes, and I've seen it broken apart. Well, we're gonna end that one anyway because uh, <laughs> Ron shut it down real quick. So, but what do you think about the original uh, famous? film of the of Sasquatch we all have seen yeah. our whole life the patty yeah. yeah so what do you I think it's real but that's because I know the people that studied it I've, I've been to Patterson site several times I know Peter Byrne quite well a good friend of mine still talk to him all the time and he, he's been there studying it and uh, I, I know uh, Bill Munns who studied the film uh, I, I know Dr. Meldum, Jeff Meldum, he studied it a lot. Uh, it's it's real, in my opinion, in, in their opinion. So what about the guy uh, who came out and said that he wore a suit? Because I think he was he was hired to wear a suit by Roger Patterson. It just never, that's not what they filmed. Oh, wow. <laughs> lucky so a different. Real one. Uh, okay. And yeah, he was probably doing that. They might have been filming him doing something. But one of the mysteries that's always going to hang out about that film is the fact that they don't have the original the original film they got copies of it yeah and uh, there's a lot of you know argument about it. it's been it's been manipulated it's been uh, messed with and uh, until you get the original and see what's really happened you're really never going to get to the bottom of it uh, bob gimlin is the guy who would probably know more if he does or he may not he just may be an innocent bystander who was there on a horse you know uh, i don't know i just know i've known bob for a long long time too and I believe Bob 
is, is uh, got the narrative that he's putting out now, and if that's the truth, we'll find. But I don't try to judge things too much unless I've been there and witnessed it myself. Yeah, I hear you. I, I, I don't like to do that because you don't know. You just, uh, I, I'm not an expert in, in manipulation and stuff. Okay, the next video I want you to review. This is one that really intrigues me. So this is Chad's favorite. This uh, is my favorite, honestly. Uh, so this was an individual who put out trail cams in Alberta, Canada. He was studying wolverines uh, ostensibly, and uh, this is what, something he recorded. And this is at night, obviously, uh, and then it's going to change to daytime. And and I'll pose the questions I have after you see uh, what happens so here. Please point to the area for him because. Okay, so I'll just point me. to this area back here first. I couldn't tell, yeah. But then keep in mind that this is at night, and the the real money shot, if you will, occurs during the day, the next this morning. This is a sexual video. Bob, <laughs> your mind is no, in the so, gutter. No, so because this video is at night, the the deer's eyes are glowing, so I never look behind the deer. Let's the let the video me, uh, you know, For all you listeners... <laughs> Look past the creepy ass deer eyes. For boy. all you listeners, uh, you can't see this, but <laughs> no, it'll be in the show notes. Go to the show I'm notes not. and you'll see it. Ready? All right, here we go. So, deer hanging out in front of the trail cam. Again, he was trying, supposedly, ostensibly studying wolverines. And this is a uh, trail that deer frequented. You can kind of see what looks like a, a deer blind behind them. It's super late at night. And, so it's like a uh, bunch of, like, uh, I don't know, like needle-type tree branches piled up. Yeah. Which is what you would do with a deer blind, maybe? Well, yeah, anything to make you blind. To the I mean, deer. <laughs> I'm not a hunter, so I don't really know how that all that works, but that would, that's what I would assume. Yeah, stuff so piled up. So still, nighttime, nothing happening. I don't know what that, what is that light over there through the trees all of a sudden that wasn't there before. Don't know what that is, but... Still, we're not at the money shot, if you will. And no, Bob, this is not sexual. Is it the moon? It might be just the moon. I think it's the moon, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's the moon in the background through the trees. So those deer have been there for like an hour and a half. It's now 4.14 a.m. It was uh, like 2.45. A lot of good foliage to eat, apparently. All right, we continue. Now, we're zooming in for some reason into that area I pointed out earlier on. And uh, when daytime comes is when it gets real interesting. So now look, in the same area, do you see that, Ron? I do. What is that? What is going on over there? Well, it could be. I mean, uh, again, I wasn't there, but it certainly looks uh, very compelling. It does, right? And it's Mm -hmm. got that same where... So basically what's happening is it's daytime, it's snowing, and now in that same area where we saw... Darkness almost. Could that have been an eye that we saw? Sort no, of like glowing. I don't think so. But. Now all of a sudden, it's like a giant. I don't know, twelve foot tall potential Sasquatch with the shoulders and the head, and there's no neck. It's almost like a triangle for a head. I don't even know how to explain that. So, Ron, I've noticed you have never said the word Sasquatch tonight. I think, I think Bigfoot is his keep thing, saying yeah. being. So, can you explain that? Well, what's in a name? I mean, they are what they are. I think they're just a... Bobby uh, Loeb said the uh, same thing. But well, yeah, so, the species that we're trying to understand. So being... Uh, I want to refer to them the same to you because you, you know, I want to be on... The problem with calling them Bigfoot and all that stuff is academia just will not touch it with a 10-foot pole. Yeah, true. Uh, it's too cartoonish sounding, so if you just say a relic or a... Sure. An old hominid of some type. Yeah, that's that's interesting right there. So my question about this video, Ron, is um, I would I would assume that the reason the Bigfoot was there was to capture some deer, and the deer were there hanging out, like doing their thing. He's behind the deer blind that maybe he made, and it does look like it was formed. Yeah, it is a de- that's that's. So a deer. why didn't he, you know, snatch the deer? And instead, it's like he was napping. And now the deer are gone, and now he's finally going to move. And, I mean, that looks like it would be 12 feet tall. Yeah, it's... Uh, what I would love to see is a man standing, a six-foot man. Yeah, six that'd be a good spot. comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's but it, what we need. If that thing is truly 12 feet tall like it looks, I could see why people soil themselves when they see these things, because that is 
an absolute giant yes. monster. Well, I got to tell you, uh, some of the chocolate, we found a chocolate up there one time, the very largest one we ever found. I only found it once, but it was up on the ridge. Like a trail, uh, you mean? Above or? our camp, and it was uh, 25 and a half inches, the track was, and there was four of them that were wow. 15 feet apart. So you can Oof. do the math on that, but that thing had to be 15 feet or so. And, oh, uh, my God. That's hard to swallow. I didn't talk about that one for a long time. I had to run across it myself. I, I'm not sure I'd have believed it, but somehow people can believe there's an eight-foot Sasquatch out there, but they have a hard time when you tell them it's, they can be twice that big. So – if that's the case, I would agree they have to be either in cave systems or energy that can come and go as they please because there's no way you could hide if you were 16 feet tall, right? Right. Well, yeah, that's the question. How do they hide? I can yeah. hear yeah, a lot of bone their bodies, you know, because I think they, they, they can take care of their own. If they're in our three-dimensional environment, which they are when they're out like that, uh, they're subject to our rules. I mean, they can be shot. They can be... They, right. they bleed, they, they procreate, they poop, they eat, they do everything we do. Uh, but when they're out of our three-dimensional environment, uh, time as we perceive it don't exist. Uh, and that's uh, been established by our astronauts in, in space when they go out. Um, so these things, if they step out of, of our third-dimensional environment into, a, say, the fifth dimension, um, you know, they can hang out there forever because time doesn't exist like we, like we perceive it. We live in a linear time. I cover all this in my quantum Bigfoot, how, how they do what they do, how their trackways disappear or just stop. Uh, I've had that happen to me, and for a long time I just wrote those people off as being delirious or something, but no. Uh, they disappear. How does that happen? Well, if, they're, if their mass can turn into energy only through frequency vibration, they wouldn't have a density, so they wouldn't leave a track. And uh, some people say, well, it's all a hoax if their trackway stops. But there's too many people reporting that. And I've had people that report to me that I saw them disappear. I see them cloak right here, cloak. Well, we only see within certain frequencies, our light frequencies. There's so many other frequencies we can't see. We can't, we can't smell uh, all frequencies like a bear does. Uh, they can smell 21 times better than us. Uh, you don't hear all, you don't hear ultrasound or infrasound, but you know it's there. But we right. don't hear it. A dog can hear ultrasound. Uh, big animals like giraffes and uh, big tigers and elephants, they communicate and can go into infrasound. And it may have been what's happened to me and one of the other guys up there when we had ourselves just frozen, just stopped and you couldn't see a thing. It might have been that it was using infrasound on us. I don't know, but there's a lot of uh, uh, enigmas associated with them we're just trying to understand. So that's where I get into all answering, trying to answer these questions that happened to me and happened to so many people over the 50 years I've been doing this, uh, people reporting this stuff to me. And after you get so many different people over so long saying the same thing, you got to kind of put, put some credit to it, you know, and well, what's right. happening? How can that happen? Al Berry had a master's degree in science. He said, whatever you do, stay with science. And, and so I, for a long time, I didn't talk about the spooky stuff that went on up there, like Einstein spooky things at a distance but you got to uh, stay with science he said so the science i think that answers some of the enigmas that we've been encountering that so many people are encountering is quantum science okay and let me read you what the Cortesa says he said the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence and uh you know max plaque who got a nobel prize for quantum science in uh, 1918, and it's called the modern science because it takes over where quantum or Newtonian science stops. Newtonian physics is what we're all trained to observe. Everything's measurable, predictable, and and uh, it's just everything is not measurable, predictable. Everything we see in our three-dimensional world is measurable, sure, but you got to get out of that to understand quantum science because it's not measurable; it's unpredictable, and we have so many more abilities within built-in humans, like telekinesis. Uh, teleportation we, we can do things a lot of people are doing now they're learning how to communicate into the pineal gland and how to get the rhythms going on with their heart and brain coherence and just listening sometimes and understanding how things happen and you get into ancient texts biblical writings uh, hebrew greek uh, mythologies and all that and you find out that th this stuff has been going on for a long long time we just and again, the, the government uh, kind of controls the narrative on all this nowadays. 
So, but do you believe the government has captured one or done testing or anything like that? I think so. I mean, I, I, I think so. But it's only because I've been connected with a geneticist or two that knows some stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but again, I wasn't there. I haven't seen it myself, but I, I believe these people and uh, they're serious. Now, Ron, do you know Todd Standing and the yes. Todd Standing videos? A little bit. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about his videos of the Sasquatch that he supposedly took? <laughs> well, again, I wasn't there. <laughs> I hate to draw opinion. I, I don't know him all that well, but uh, I know people that do know him quite well, hung out with him a lot. And uh, I think he's probably had some real stuff happen. Yeah. Uh, but he's so hungry to get it out there. Sometimes uh, he, he's a little Maybe it's just a little overboard on trying to make it happen. Too. So here, here's here's his video, and it's been stabilized. And uh, this is one of the things that really uh, got my imagination going when I first saw this, and I didn't realize. So, you know, there's a video of a supposed Sasquatch that he's... You can see the face clearly through the trees... Uh, and it's not really moving very much. It does blink its eye at some point. And it seems like a lot of people think that this is fake. Uh, but I, I mean, when I first saw this, I, I found this to be super intriguing. And uh, certainly a lot of work went behind this if it's not real. Well, I don't know if it's real or not. Uh, I just know why Todd has got that reputation now. It's because he has tried to make things happen that maybe didn't yeah. happen. Some of this may be real, though. So there's a, there's a good and a bad to all this. I, I did hear him speak at a convention I was at one time that I was speaking at also. And really his whole theme of that whole thing was trying to raise money for a film. Right. And that kind of got everybody off. And he was I using, uh, uh, well, that's, that's probably as much as I should say because I like, I like, I don't try to make enemies anywhere. Uh, no, 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 I understand. And I, I really enjoyed his movie. Uh, I think it was called in search of Bigfoot or in search of Sasquatch. I can't remember. You can watch it on YouTube. I really enjoyed the movie. And I, when I saw these images, I was like, Oh my God, if that's real, that's, uh, that's the most clear evidence of Sasquatch anybody has ever come across. And I was like, how do people not know that this is real at this point? But, um, I don't know. It, people don't seem to take it seriously. So I don't know what to say about that. You probably said it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's one. Uh, you're in Washington, right? I am. So this is from the Washington department of transportation and one of their, uh, cameras, it's supposedly right, yeah, a, this, huh? okay. You've seen this. So what do you think of this? If I play this now? Well, uh, again, they control the narrative. Uh, I'd like to see a man walking across there the same way to see if it, yeah, if it yeah. measures up. And so many people will get these pictures and they don't show you a comparison. So you don't know how it measures up. Uh, it could be. So it's across the highway going across the Cascades up here. And it's done by a, a camera that got staged there for a snow load, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, most A lot of people say it's fake. But, you know, why? Well, I don't think it's fake. I think it's real video. Whether or not well, that's yeah, a man I, I in I didn't a, mean fake like, yeah, uh, yeah. like it wasn't real video. Yeah, understood. But yeah, exactly. Why would somebody get in a suit and walk up that hill to a thermal camera that's being run by the Department of Transportation? Like, it's not they're they're not going to get paid for this. Nobody's going to pay them. So, what is the point? Right. Uh. Anyway, the next thing I wanted to ask you about is: Have you seen? Have you seen this? This is uh, an entry in the Army Corps of Engineers field book for Washington State from back in the day, and they have an entry in there about Sasquatch, which I find to be super interesting that the Army Corps of Engineers did that. Have you seen this? I have not, no. Yeah. And Good so man. I don't have the close-up of the text, but the text apparently is what you may discover 
uh, if you are close to a Sasquatch in the Washington wilderness and what to do if you encounter it. And it's basically like, you know, it's, it's very similar stuff to what you would do if you encounter a bear. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, so yes, I found that to be very interesting. And then here's another one. I don't have, let me know if you've seen this and I'm literally showing you catalog.archives.gov. This is the national archives catalog, a U.S. government website. This is a foreign service dispatch from the American embassy in Kathmandu, Nepal. And this is from 1959 and it's regarding what to do if you are out on a search for Yeti and you happen to discover it. So royalty of, I think that's rupees, Indian rupees, 5,000 Indian currency will have to be paid to His Majesty's government of Nepal for a permit to carry out an expedition in search of, and they put it in quotes, Yeti. In case Yeti is traced, it can be photographed or caught alive, but it must be, it must not be killed or shot except in an emergency arising out of self-defense. All photographs taken of the animal, the creature itself, if captured alive or dead, must be surrendered to the government of Nepal at the earliest time. News and reports throwing light on the actual existence of the creature must be submitted to the government of Nepal uh, as soon as they are available and must not in any way be given out to the press or reporters for publicity without the permission of the government of Nepal. For the ambassador signed, Eric H. Fisk, Counselor of Embassy. Ernest. I mean, this is real deal right Ernest here. Ernest H. Pick. Yeah. Right? I like that. I know I've never seen that. You know, I know Peter Byrne. He was over there with the, uh, uh, expedi- the uh, uh, Slick Expedition in the 50s. And he supposedly took a finger off a Yeti hand that was being guarded. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And uh, anyway, uh, uh, he would know about this probably because he may have been responsible. One of the guys responsible for causing this. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Because <laughs> uh, the, the Slick Expedition had quite a few guys on it, and he was one of them. And he's the one that's brought into the uh, uh, Bluff Creek site in the, in the 60s when after that uh, Patterson film. But, yeah. Uh, that's, that's really, I like that. Right? I'd like to have a copy of that. Yeah, yeah I'll send you the link for sure. I, uh, I'll send I it to like your that. email. I just find it super interesting that uh, the State Department, the U.S. State Department at this time apparently took it seriously. Like, if you I wonder if they still do. I know yeah. they found a Bob Butan one time in Himalayas here a few years back, 2014, I think it was, and they found a, uh, what they thought was Yeti tracks coming in the 17,000 feet. They got some eDNA out of it. It was sponsored by the National Geographic and uh, came back, and the uh, mitochondrial DNA was uh, was 99% human. And uh, that kind of makes all everybody think what had to be contaminated, but they swear, but none it wasn't contaminated. They had a geneticist up there taking it. I was in Nepal and Kathmandu actually for quite oh, some wow. time with Peter Byrne. I traveled across Nepal to his where he used to guide people into the uh, into the uh, jungles there and uh, check out the tigers. And anyway, it was a it was a fun trip. I so, enjoyed it being over there. in all your travels, because I know you've been to South America, you just told us you've been to Nepal and et cetera. So, aside from you know your home, the United States, what would you say is your favorite place to be or to explore? Uh, let's go with explore. Explore, um, Peru, South America. Wow. Without a doubt. There's so many enigmas down there. That's the cradle board. I think of enigmas. <laughs> That's where the elongated skull, the pre Inca people were who uh, had the uh, elongated skulls. They, the scientists that I was down there with, uh, we'd studied those skulls. There's no sigil suture in them. You know, they have one single parietal. We have two, one on each side with a sigil okay, suture so on our head. Let me just tell you that I am an ignorant, and I've heard you say this before, and I don't know what those things so are. So I've seen Dr. Can you so explain that to what's me, What's the best resource we can <laughs> use to educate ourselves on this? Yes. What are you those two to, things you just mentioned? A sigil suture. That's yes. Like, uh, well, down, down, we have two parietal. Parietal bones are the side of your head. Okay, each side. We have two sides, you know, two brain parts and all that stuff. And yes. right down the middle is a suture, a sigil uh, a crack, basically. It closes up and uh, uh, it leaves a uh, part right there. And uh, they don't have that down there. They have a single parietal, just one long, you get a skull, which and their brain mass was 30%, about 30% more than what we have. 
And that's why the Incos cradle boarded their young, you know, put down their heads and boards to uh, make them elongated. Incas did that, called cradle deformation. And they did that trying to mimic, we think, trying to mimic the pre-Inca people that had the abilities to move these big megalithic boulders and put them up in these mountains and cut them, put them together like a jigsaw puzzle. So probably related to eyes. the people that built the pyramids in Egypt that we still don't quite understand how that was possible. Yeah, right? you got this, you know, same technology has been yeah. shared all over the world for eons, and we're just not catching up to it. <laughs> So, but if we want to learn about the elongated skulls, where will we? Uh, best person is Brian Forrester, F-O-E-R-S-T-E-R. He lives down in Paracas, Peru. I've been with him a few times, and he's uh, he's probably knows more about the Paracas skulls than anybody. Even is he willing guys. to get on uh, podcasts? Pardon me? Is he willing to get on podcasts? Probably. I okay. mean, he sells books. He, he guides people. Excellent. Uh, yeah, that'd be amazing, because that's, that's just, very uh, contact interesting. Him. He's uh, Peru. Very professional person. He's a biologist by trade. He came out of Canada, but he lives in Paracas, Peru. Now he married a, a local down there from Lima, and he's a he's a well informed, intelligent man. So if you could pass on his contact info, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So I, I've been down to. But you the, can Google it. He's he's well known. He's oh, okay. in a lot of programs. Uh, oh, we need his phone number and his email. But <laughs> if you have it, it's cool. If not, no worries. But so I've been to a lot of Mayan ruins in uh, Mexico, Central America. And when I was there, I saw a lot of people like holding the sides of the ruins, like in the caves underneath and uh, f like feeling some sort of power. Do, what do you think about the Mayans in there? Do, do you think they ha had that same power you're talking about? We, we now are searching for. I'm not sure it's power or just a knowledge of uh, the stars. They did have some knowledge, that's for sure. How if they were getting it and acquiring that knowledge is, is not known by me. That's what I always uh, wondered. How do they get, how do they get the knowledge? Yeah. Right. Star people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so, a, so the Mayan calendar was a huge thing, right? It yeah, only went to I think the, that 2012 deal was just a, a time for our our uh, pages to change in our book. We are now in the enlightenment stage, and I think we're going to continue in that stage for a while. And I think we're going to be inundated probably with knowledge of aliens uh, soon. We already so. are, but it's, it's being yeah. fed to us just to what we what the government thinks we can handle at a time. But uh, as long as we keep destroying this earth like we're doing, uh, they're going to start coming out more and more, and they'll stop us. I mean, they, they, they will do, they won't let us destroy this earth, I don't think. We keep going like we're doing. Somebody's going to hit the wrong button at the wrong time, and we're going to start a world war and mess this planet up for a long, long time. So if they're going to stop us, do they annihilate us to protect the no, earth? No, no, I think they just, like they've done, there's been a lot of reports of these things all of a sudden these things can stop a button from being pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can, they can shut the, down the nuclear warheads. Yeah, they, they have advanced technology, they, and they do. They can shut down the nuclear warheads. Or and they'll send the Sasquatches to beat your brains on. <laughs> beat your brains in, Bob. Yeah, Donald Trump's secret <laughs> service were alien greys holding the suitcase so he didn't fuck it up. <laughs> could be, could be. Hopefully he goes. So before we let you go, Ron, uh, Bob has a family friend who's big time into the idea of giants. Yes. And I know that you've actually done some expeditions and research into giants. You believe that uh, that is a true history of our past. Uh, please expound. Now, I think it's will. documented. Well, I think, uh, yeah, really what's documented and what comes out and what we read is all controlled by the narrative of the government that was in charge at the time. And just like it is now. And what's the truth is. I think there have been giants, yeah, all the way back from pre-flood days when you want to talk biblical, talk biblical times about the Nephilim, which were supposedly giants that uh, aliens uh, bred with the human women and created these Nephilim giants. And that's basically what supposedly called the flood, which is worldwide known now there was a big flood, a big catastrophic flood, not just a bunch of rain, but catastrophic. And uh, But yet they were here after the flood too, so... You got to wonder if they did it before, they can do it again, and they're doing it now. They're, they're, depends on the agenda of the alien involved. And I say that because I think there's different types of these Bigfoot things. I think they messed with the primates' genome and the DNA, and they created what they wanted or what they're trying to create. There's experimental programs going on all the time, I believe. And uh, anyway, that's what I think. 
Oh. Uh, so, I, that's, and, go so ahead. It was all, you know, we had these beautiful women. They always want to fornicate. Really, <laughs> yeah, the aliens, the giants. Yeah. I mean, one alien wouldn't want one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it is pretty, uh, I always find it interesting how they always come for these women, man. Well, it's like the old story of King Kong, like taking the chain <laughs> the small up, the, woman, up the building. Yeah. Like, hey, no. Like, how, much, how much time do I have? <laughs> As much as you as want. As much as you want. Yeah, yeah. We're just well, happy. I mean, I, I, we got things going on. I probably have to get off here. Yeah, no, yeah. no worries. No yeah, worries. Yeah. No, we're ready to wrap up. And uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on. So we do a little thing, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we call words of wisdom. And uh, I will start. And I will say that um, if you go to Vegas and come home with a cold, take four or five COVID tests to make sure that what you have is not COVID. Because you think you have COVID now? Because then you could spread <laughs> it to everybody. No, every COVID test I took is negative, but I'm still doubting just because. As you breathe How on How can me. I have anything? Yes. I am breathing and coughing all over you. Okay, Bob, your turn. So, Bob, this week is deferring to Ron Moorhead, and I am proud no, to do so, No, you have no words of wisdom? Mine, listen to his. Ron, <laughs> go ahead, sir. Okay. The thing you fear, the thing you fear most will come upon you. <laughs> That's one of them. <laughs> where you put your energy, where you put your thoughts, this probably could materialize, so be careful how you think. Oh, I love that. Uh, I, uh, that's, well, I'm sorry, Bob. Did I interrupt you? No, 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 no he no, wanted no. that. Uh, uh, that was beautiful, well, and I agree with you. Well, Regarding Bigfoot, you don't find them. You don't go out and find them. They will find you if your vibrational frequency, your own, if your own energy is the right way. Uh, I think they can intertwine and maybe mind speak. I call it quantum entanglement. When, when your vibrational frequency is at the right stage, they are able to entangle with you. And uh, that's how some people say, well, I, I heard these voices. And I always wonder, was I hearing voices or <laughs> was I imagining it in my own head? But um, I think we all have the ability to... Um, to be telepathic we just haven't learned how to uh, really make it all happen within us yet but i think human humans have a lot to go my other piece of wisdom i think i mentioned to you earlier if it is wisdom is, there's no such thing as losing you either win or you learn something and i don't like for Very anyone nice. to play the role of uh of being uh uh loser what do you call it? the uh victim yeah <laughs> i like that shouldn't be a victim because really, we're here for experiences, and really, we're here to make our karma better, you know, to be a better people. You do that through raising your own personal vibrational frequency, and you do that by having compassion for others and caring for others. And when you start beating other people or hurting other people, it just takes you down. You get sick more often. I don't think Absolutely. that can happen to you. Wow. I'm going to go say to my son, son, you don't lose. You just gain an experience. That's right. And, and, but and honestly, you got to make the most most of everything because everything you're here for, in times somewhere along the line, you've asked for it, so you could you could challenge it and, and respond to it the right way. Our whole goal as a human humanity is to raise our frequency and raise ourselves so we can elevate into another dimension someday. Because according to physics, you never die. Your energy cannot die. It can only change forms. Mm -hmm. If you're religious, you'll say, "Well, I'm going to go to heaven when I die." If you're a physicist, you say, "We're going to change forms," but you don't. You don't die. Your body dies, but your consciousness, your essence, who you really are, goes on. It just changes form. What it goes to, Einstein wouldn't even guess. But uh, you know, who knows? I, I think we have we have multiple embodiments just to correct ourselves because we've asked for it, so we can do Bob, better. Bob, I feel a slight tingle up my spine. Ron, <laughs> very wise words. No, for real, Ron. So, and and I I have a question. So that belief is there a religion that ties into that or are you taking lessons from everything you've learned your whole life? Well, that's in the first Ron, uh, third chapter. <laughs> 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 no, I don't have a religion behind it. Really. I don't. Uh, it's how I think and how I come to think after all these years of, of looking into, it. I was raised religiously in churches and I, I know scripture pretty well, but I've known that some of it just don't make sense to me and didn't make sense. Right, right. I'm afraid a lot of people have fallen away, fallen away from religion because of that. And it, it just seems like the woo-woo out there somewhere. And yet they call someone who believes in Bigfoot a woo-woo or, you know, if you just believe in the paranormal, uh, you're a woo-woo guy. If you believe in the ape camp, you're just a flesh and blood and that's all. But nothing is just flesh and blood. We are all energy. Bigfoot is energy. And what they do with that and how they've learned to do it is what we're studying. 
Very nice. Bob, yeah, your Dave, words of wisdom. Do you see why I deferred to him? You need to, I cannot follow, you need to up follow with that. that up with something <laughs> very Trust nice. Trust me, I cannot. There is a sale for toilet paper at Costco. Come on, <laughs> well, Bob. So, <laughs> and, one more little, can I say one more little thing? Yes, please. Yes, yes please. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, according to Edgar Mitchell, he said it takes classical and quantum sciences together to have clear perception. So I encourage any researcher out there listening to this that they engage in learning about quantum science a little bit and how it might pertain to some of the enigmas associated with these beings we call Bigfoot. And uh, that's really, I love that statement he makes, Edgar Mitchell. Super nice. And I love that. Use, you gotta, we live in a quantum, we live in a, um, a Newtonian physics. You know, that's what we've learned. That's what we think that's all there is. But there's more going on that don't meet our eyes. That we just don't don't see every day with our eyes you got to open up your third eye your pineal gland and, and get into it and uh, learn how to listen instead of talk so much you know? i think that's called meditation so do you and meditate to, i do yes. so is that an iphone app i can get or like what's the best yeah you can start with headspace learn, you got to learn how it's it's something you just have to learn you can go on yeah you can, i don't know i don't have an app but uh, there's all kinds of meditation things on uh, on YouTube. Headspace, if you're listening, you can become a sponsor of the Basement Hangout for as little as one hundred dollar. No, no. So, so we, so we have. A <laughs> it's guy, a good app, actually. Uh, so my, yeah, my, I think my brother used that. But we have a, we have a had had a, we've had a guy on multiple times who astro projects himself to wherever he wants to be. Yes, and he claims it started with meditation. So have mm -hmm. you ever like, you know, tried that kind of uh, astro projection? Yeah. yeah, anybody can do that. You just have to learn how. Because what it does, it, you're taking yourself, your, your consciousness out of your body and you're moving it around uh, somewhere in the place. I know some people quite well, very serious people who, who really are engaged with the FBI to find missing people. Oh, wow. And they're, good, they're good at it, you know. Uh, so That's amazing. It's real. And, and the realization comes in learning how. And you start off by meditating. Just clear your mind and open up yourself to receive uh, receive instead of trying to ask for things all the time. Mm. That's amazing. Prayer, yeah. prayer is asking for things. Meditation yeah, yeah. is good receiving point. things. Yeah, that is a real good point. Well, there are certain types of prayer, and I've always heard this, and my wife talks about this all, always. When you pray, you don't ask for health, you don't ask for money, you don't ask for whatever. You pray for other people, and you say... But I'm still asking for something. Well, no, but help you, this person, you help. just say, I want every, you know, I want so-and-so to get what they want. I want so-and-so to be healthy. You're putting out good vibes but to he's, the But he's opening universe. himself as a, I don't know what it's called, Ron. Opening <laughs> himself to messages coming in or whatever it is. What is it, Ron? Well, what you're saying is that you want good for other people. That's right. called compassion and exactly. love and caring. And that's been taught to us for, from the masters for a long time. Right. And if you do go with that philosophy in your life and try to do that, don't get angry with some person to double their medication to stop sign. They don't know when to push the gas pedal and go. You, you feel like sometimes you just want to, when you're in a hurry, you just want to nail them or something. Right. <laughs> Have yeah. compassion for them because, you know, everybody needs compassion. And I think that's what we all have to learn, get our egos out of the way and, uh, and start, uh, being kind to other people. And once we can do that as a, as a group, a consciousness group, we can grow. make the whole world better. You're a wise, wise man. Those Sasquatches infrasounded some knowledge into your head, Ron, I think. <laughs> beings. <laughs> Please do not say Sasquatch. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, but the beings. Damn. Sasquatch, there it is. <laughs> do you see why I cannot? Uh, I am not going to follow that I mean, up. Ron, thank you, you sir. You have an obligation. Uh, for words of you could you know what dude if I were uh, you trust me I had some but I cannot uh, okay I'm going to my words of wisdom are listen to Ron Moorhead buy his books please yes I was just going to say that com. that yes, could be Ron your words of wisdom do it and again please <laughs> my name is Bob my words of wisdom are listen to Ron Moorhead please buy his books watch documentaries <laughs> thank you Bob and, uh, yes. thank you. No, thank very you, smart sir. words of wisdom I appreciate being on your program today